Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, here for a video on Cambridge Secondary 1 Checkpoint Science Paper 2 Specimen Paper for Examination from 2014. Let's start. Question 1. A. The boxes show some parts of plants and the function of the parts. Draw a line from each part to match its function. So the part flower is for reproduction, part leaf is for photosynthesis, Part root is for absorption of water, and part stem is transport of water and minerals. B. Complete the word equation for photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose plus oxygen. Let's go to question 2. Complete the table by deciding if the information indicates that the element is a metal or a non-metal. So the elements are A, B, C, D, E. Magnetic for everything except B is no. For A, C, D, and E, it's no, and B is yes. Say that room temperature. A and C are liquids. B and E are solids, and D is a gas at room temperature. Does it conduct electricity? A, B, and E conduct electricity, while C and D do not. Well, if the state of an object or substance is solid at room temperature, most likely it is a metal. If it conducts electricity, yes, it's a metal. As we can see, the two substances which are solid at room temperature conduct electricity. So both of them are metals. Now, these two are liquid and gas at room temperature. Gases are definitely non-metals if they're gas at room temperature. So that's not metal. And then it's a liquid at room temperature and it does not conduct electricity. That also means it's non-metal. For substance A, is a liquid at room temperature but then it does conduct electricity and because all the solids need to be dissolved they want to conduct electricity because of ionic bonding that means liquids that conduct electricity are also metals so a b and e are metals and c and d are non-metals that's the answer question three complete each explanation using these words a. People who walk across snow may wear snowshoes. The person does not sink into the snow because the force acts on a larger area, so the pressure is less. How is this logically true? It's because of the formula pressure equals force by area. So if the area is greater, that means pressure is less if there's an equal amount of force. B. A sharp knife cuts through cheese more easily than a blunt knife. The edge of the sharp knife has a smaller area, so the force acting on the knife produces a larger pressure. Pressure equals force by area, and if the area is smaller, that means the pressure will be larger because we're dividing by the area. That's the answer. Question 4. Plants and green algae need mineral salts to grow. One mineral salt is magnesium sulfate. Ahmed and Safia investigate the growth of algae. They put different concentrations of magnesium sulfate solution into five flasks, A, B, C, D, and E. They then add the algae. So they measure 10 centimeter cube of algae using a syringe, and they add it to each flask, leaving it for five days. A. Why did Ahmed and Safia put 10 centimeter cube of algae into each flask? Well, the simple answer is to just make a fair test. Or in other words, make the results reliable. This volume of algae is a control variable so that the test is not unfair or we do not get anomalous results. That's why we need to add equal amounts of algae. B. Why do they leave the flask for five days? The experiment is to investigate the growth of algae. And if you just leave it for like two hours, it's not easy to find the growth of algae completed. So to test the growth of algae, we need to leave it for at least a few days, which means five days is a good medium for that. So that's the answer. Let's go to question C. Here are the results. So there's a table containing the flask A, B, C, D, E, the concentration of magnesium sulfate. One is dilute and five is the most concentrated. So these three are in the middle. The color of the algae, 1 equals light green and 10 is equal to darkest green. Complete the sentence to describe the pattern of results. As the concentration of magnesium sulfate increased from 1 to 5, the color of the algae 
turns from light green to dark green slowly or gradually from A to D, and then suddenly back to light green from D to E. Extremely light green, not just normal because it is one. D, when the color of the algae is dark green, it has grown the most. Complete the sentence. Choose a word from the list. When the concentration of magnesium sulfate is four, the algae grow fastest. This is because dark green color means that the algae has grown the most as given here, and 10 is dark green, and that's concentration four. So algae grow fastest in concentration four. That's the answer. Question five, look at the table. It shows the melting and boiling points of some elements. Use the table to answer these questions. A. Write down the name of the element that melts at 1,538 degrees Celsius. That is iron because it's given here. Melting point is 1,538 degrees. B. Which element is a liquid at room temperature 20 degrees Celsius? That means that its melting point should be below 20 degrees Celsius, but the boiling point should be above 20 degrees Celsius. And mercury is exactly that. Its melting point is negative 39, so it becomes a liquid when the temperature goes equal to or above negative 39. And then the boiling point is 357 degrees. So at below or equal to 357, mercury will be a liquid. So 20 degrees is above negative 39 and below 357, so it's a liquid at room temperature. C. Which element is a non-metal? Non-metals have extremely low melting points and boiling points. As we can see, oxygen has negative 219 as a melting point and negative 183 as boiling point, which is extremely low, right? So that is the non-metal, oxygen. That's the answer. Question 6. Here are some statements about the solar system. A. Write down the letter of the statement that answers each of these questions. 1. Why does the sun appear to move across the sky each day? The answer is B, because the Earth spins on its axis. The Earth is the one which rotates, not the Sun. The Sun stays stationary. 2. Why do some stars appear in the summer night sky, but not in the winter night sky? Well, the answer is A, because the Earth orbits the Sun. So let's say the Sun is here, and in the summer, let's say the Earth is here. In the winter, it'll go 180 degrees, right? So the Earth will be over here, and... The stars which are visible over here might not be visible over here because the sun blocks the star over here. So that is a logical explanation. Now, three, what did Copernicus and Galileo think was wrong? The answer is E, that the sun orbits the earth. Copernicus and Galileo were literally dis disrespected in community for thinking about this because everyone used to believe that the earth was at the center and then all the other planets orbited around Earth, which is completely wrong. B. Venus is not a source of light. Explain why it's possible to see Venus in the night sky. Venus reflects the sun's light. That's the simple answer. Because even though, let's say there's the sun and this is the Earth over here. So this half over here will be having a night sky. And Venus, let's say Venus is over here. V. So from somewhere over here on Earth, it's possible to see Venus. And how? Because the sun's light reflects onto Venus to come over here to Earth, and we can see Venus in the night sky. That's the answer. Question 7. The diagram shows a power state cell. A. Which three structures labeled in the diagram are not found in animal cells? In animal cells, you can find nucleus, cell membrane, and cytoplasm. So the three structures which are not found are vacuo, cell wall, and chloroplast. That's the answer. B. Name the part of the cell in which photosynthesis takes place. Photosynthesis takes place in chloroplasts because it absorbs sunlight. That's the answer. Question 8. The earth is made up of three layers including the core and the crust. A. What's the name of the other layer? It is the mantle because core and crust are already given. The middle layer between the two is mantle. B. The core is made of mainly two metals. One is nickel. What is the name of the other metal? That is iron. That's the answer. Part C. What's the approximate age of the Earth? Tick the correct box. The approximate age is 4.6 billion 
years old. And that means 4,600 million years old. That's the answer. Question 9. The diagram shows the energy flow into and out of a coal-fired power station. A. How much useful electrical energy is provided by the power station? Useful electricity is simply 300 megajoules as given the diagram. That's the answer. B. Calculate how much energy is wasted from the cooling tower. So out of 1000 megajoules of coal, 70 is wasted in friction in the boiler and turbine generator. So we get that out. And the cooling tower at one of the value, for example, X is wasted. And then 30 megajoules is wasted in heating wires and 300 megajoules is used for electricity. So we subtract these three from 1000, we'll get this energy wasted, which is X. So X will be 100 minus 70 minus 30 minus 300, 600 megajoules. That's the answer. Question 10. Manjit puts a metal saucepan of milk on a cooker. Thermal or heat energy can be transferred by conduction, convection, and radiation. A. What's the main process that transfers thermal energy through the milk? Through the milk, it is convection because it is vertical transfer of thermal energy through liquids and gases. B. Which is the main process that transfers thermal energy through the metal saucepan? Since there's a metal saucepan, it can conduct heat or thermal energy. And that will be conduction. That's the answer. Question 11. The alimentary canal consists of many different organs. Look at the diagram of the alimentary canal. A. What's the name of part A? This is the food pipe leading to the stomach, or in other words, esophagus. It's pronounced as esophagus, but there's an extra O at the front. That's the answer. B. The stomach is not labeled on the diagram. Draw a label line on the diagram to show the stomach. Stomach is this structure right here, which somewhat looks like a kidney bean, but it's not the kidneys, of course. It is the stomach, and we need to do our label line touching the part of the stomach. We want to write the name there. C. Draw lines to match the organ with its function. The large intestine, it simply absorbs water. The small intestine, it digests proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and absorbs water, amino acids, sugars, and fatty acids meaning it simply absorbs nutrients and water. The stomach food is mixed up into a creamy liquid, which will be able to be separated from its nutrients there by the small intestine. Food is chewed into small pieces, does not come under any of these organs. It is actually the mouth which does that. That's the answer. Question 12, Yubi does an experiment on sound. Yubi connects a microphone to an oscilloscope. He places the microphone at different distances from the loudspeaker, and he records the amplitude of the wave on the oscilloscope. Here are some of the results on the oscilloscope. Distance, 4 cm, 6 cm, 11 cm, 25 cm. A. Use these pictures to complete the results table. So distance is centimeters and amplitude of wave in number of squares is given. For 4 cm, it's 2.5 amplitude. For 25 centimeters, it's one amplitude as given here. How is it one and not two for this? Because the middle line is over here. One amplitude is the height of the wave from the middle line to its peak. And that's just one. Over here, the middle line's here, and this height uh, from the line to the peak is 2.5. So using similar ideas, this is the middle line here of the wave, and from a point on the middle line to the top, two squares. For 11 centimeters, the middle line is there. From a point on the middle line to the peak, it is 1.5 squares. So we can write that over here to the corresponding distances. That's the answer. Question B. Which pattern describes the result best? Take the correct answer. The amplitude does not change with distance, the amplitude decreases with distance, the amplitude increases with distance, and there's no pattern in the result. Well, if the distance increases, that means the amplitude decreases, or inverse proportion. So the amplitude decreases with distance. The second option. Question 13. Hydrogen peroxide is used to make oxygen in the lab battery. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down to form water and oxygen. A. This reaction is much faster when a chemical called manganese oxide is added to hydrogen peroxide. 
The manganese oxide is unchanged at the end of the reaction. What type of chemical is manganese oxide? Take the correct answer. First of all, if you got confused by the symbol of IV or 4 on manganese, it's actually just a group of transition metals. There is a certain type of metal in the periodic table called transition metals, and there are many groups in the periodic table for the transition metals. Manganese is in the fourth group of those. So don't confuse it. You will probably learn this in sooner times. Anyway, check the correct answer for what type of chemical manganese oxide is. It's a catalyst since it speeds up the reaction and it's unchanged at the end. B. Blessy investigates the effect of temperature on the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. 1. By down the way of Bushy to change. That'll be the temperature because she investigates the effect of temperature on the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. This is the independent variable. Two, write on one variable she should control or keep the same. So that is the amount of hydrogen peroxide which is breaking down. You can also write volume. That's the answer. Question 14. Some metal railings have started to bust. A. Which metal were the railings made of? Circle the correct answer. Well, any railings which have started to rust are obviously made of iron. B. Which two substances must be present for the railings to rust? Circle the two correct answers. It has to be water and oxygen. Only if the iron is moist or it comes in contact with water or water vapor and also with the oxygen gas, it will oxidize and then a brown red substance or rust will start to form on it. See, how can you prevent railings from rusting? There's one answer, oil them regularly, but then there's also another one which is simply painting them because the paint has also a layer of protection to these iron railings. And then the oxygen and water won't be able to come in contact with them. Oiling them regularly also does a similar job. It can stop the water and oxygen from coming in direct contact with the metal railings at the same time. Only difference is it'll look a bit uglier than if you paint it, of course. <laughs> anyway, we can go to question 15 now. This is a question about forces. Look at the diagrams. Which diagrams show a turning force? Choose from A, B, C, D, and E. So A, this is a spanner screwing a nut, and the force is applied here. So the force is applied on this part of the spanner. That means it'll keep rotating like this as you screw the nut in. So this is one of them. And the second diagram showing a turning force is E. Because let's say the boy is heavier than the girl. That means the boy will apply a turning force so that the seesaw turns this way. And if this thing could rotate 360 degrees, it will rotate like this and it'll keep going. So A and E are the answers. Let's go to question 16. A car is driving along a road. Complete the sentences about the car. Use words from the list. The car is slowing down. The forces that slow the car down are dash and dash. Out of these six forces given, it is air resistance and friction. Since friction acts in the opposite direction on the land or on the ground of the car, and air resistance acts on the air. So the car is moving this way. The air will push against the windscreen and the front of the car to try to stop it from moving or slow it down. That's the answer. And with that, I come to the end of this video. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Math and Science with SV, signing out. Thank you. Bye.